welcome to this week's edition of Debriefing the Law. I am Joel Oster. I'm Chris And we are now on, I believe, week five, week four, depending upon how you count, of the football season. Mm -hmm. It is time now to eliminate the pretenders and then go ahead and crown those who actually have a shot of winning the Super Bowl. And Chris, I think we can do the same thing with the presidential Republican candidates. It's time to start <laughs> eliminating the field. Man, it is like Survivor. We got to vote some people off here. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of nine people debates and commercials and all that well, jazz. Let's well, yeah, I'm excited about that. We have a lot to talk about this week. So let's just jump right yeah. in. Let's start with the, some legal news here. Michigan State. Uh, Spartans, the University of Michigan State, Tough Michigan spot. State University, however they're known. They have fired mm -hmm. their football coach, Mel Tucker, uh, this week mm -hmm. for cause. Here is what happened. Um, so there has been a lot of controversy going on out there in Michigan State, as I'm assuming pretty much everyone, unless you've been living under a rock for the last several years, involving sexual misconduct throughout their sporting program. I don't know the guy's name, Nassar or something like that. You know, a huge multi, multi-million dollar uh, verdict or settlement against the university. People are in jail over it. Huge deal. So they're, it's fair to say they are somewhat sensitive about the issue of sexual appropriateness. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that fair to say? I, I think most people are at this juncture that, you know, there's a lot of discussion out there about what is not and what is appropriate Sexual conduct amongst people in the workplace. Yes, yes. But I would think that in, in the, I know you're general counsel, so maybe you have a different perspective than I do, but I would think that not everyone's sexual past is, it resembles that of Michigan State University. Right. I mean, their allegations I, go fair. way overboard as to what they did. When you heard about what Michigan State involving gymnast, Olympic gymnast, oh my God. it was like, are you kidding me? I mean, come on. Absolutely. Next thing you're going to be telling me is that the president of the United States is getting blowjobs under the tables by interns. It's just crazy stuff here. But <laughs> that being said, it did happen. And so crazy stuff does happen and it happened there at Michigan State University horrible stuff and so they brought in this lady to uh, the football team did to talk to the people there at the, at the, at the on the fo football team about appropriate sexual behavior and, and conduct right. and and so that's that's a positive thing well what happened next was Michigan State's football coach uh Mel Tucker who allegedly is estranged from his wife, began, allegedly. from his perspective, to have a flirtatious um, relationship with this uh, this lady. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean by that. Uh, they had approximately 30 phone calls lasting all each over 30 minutes in the middle of the night. Now, Chris, if I am having 30 phone calls with someone of the opposite sex, Around midnight, my wife should be concerned. That that's not normal behavior by guys. Would you agree with that? I, I would say that it is normal behavior of individuals that are seeking the companionship of someone else. I think that's right. I I, I think that that is that is I don't know flirtatious behavior. That is relationship seeking behavior. If it's midnight, look, and Mel and I are roughly the same age. Like at midnight, I'm asleep, bro. Or I'm trying to convince my wife to do things. All right. It's one hey, of the two. We're trying to keep this PG 13. Oh, my goodness. We Are you bringing but, that? Really? <laughs> really? We're wondering why he's calling the. The, the the behavioral list on okay. the phone at midnight and talking for hours. Okay, a good, good point. It's, yeah, it is. It, it's not. Yeah, they're not discussing what's the next Disney movie, or <laughs> you know, rainbows and butterflies. Speaking of what happens uh, late in the night, so the other night I was actually playing tennis, and uh, we did not start our tennis match until. 8 30 and it's a two hour tennis match which means it's going to go till 10 30. Okay. i'm going what the heck i'm supposed to stay awake no. and, and play tennis no. at 8 30 at night till 10 30 oh, no. and so i was at the net in this doubles match and my my partner had a great serve and then they returned it right next to me now if you're listening in your car i'm holding up my hands but i'm basically standing here at the net the ball comes right to my right hand i mean it's, it's that close now, in tennis, you are trained to jump on any floater across the net you pounce on. It's called poaching. Okay. Well, 
I was okay. so tired. I just watched the ball fly right by my right hand. I'm going, what the heck? Am I asleep here? Should I just bring a pillow onto the tennis court? This is ridiculous. So I went back to my partner and I said, you know what? We got to change our strategy. I'm going to now play from the baseline. My reflexes are not working because they started this match way too dang late. So that's, that's, that's a whole right. other story. I actually resemble that meme have- that says I was born to party. Do, do you kind of feel that way? Are you Were you burned, born to party? Well, the end of the meme goes until about nine o'clock or so. <laughs> I was so I was talking with a really good friend of mine last night. Um, they're heading off to Vegas this weekend, and I'm like, I'm good. Like, don't need to come. I Ve- Vegas is not my town anymore. Like, I remember being in like my my late teens, early twenties, mid twenties. You know, only needing 15, 20, 30 minutes of sleep and being able to run a full day and and all that stuff. And nowadays, I'm like. Well, I got to get up to do the podcast, and so that means I need to go to bed at 6.30 at night. Yep, 6.30 at night. That's exactly when I need to go to bed so I can get up early to wow. do the podcast. Wow, so he, this Michigan State coach, uh, Mel Tucker, is having conversations with this mm-hmm. lady in the middle of the night. Into the night. And plus, they have a lot, a lot of text messages between the two. Now, both he and her deleted all of those text messages, so we don't know what was in those text messages that that's rather unfortunate. So here's what happened during one of those middle of the night phone calls. Now I, I apologize yeah, for yeah. what I'm about to say. Maybe I can find a way to dance around it. If you do have little kids, you don't want them to hear sexualized kind of comments. Then I guess turn the volume down. But during one of these phone calls, he, um, mm-hmm. uh, how would Seinfeld have put it? Um, I, I don't know. He masturbated during the, the phone call. Yeah. And so, right. uh, they then went on after that and they continued to have several, uh, phone calls and, and an ongoing relationship. Well, he then did she, apparently word started getting leaked out that, that this was going on, or she was talking about mm-hmm. maybe her and him having a relationship. He did not like that. And so he basically did not bring her back to the university to, to engage in her sexual uh, awareness uh, program. And she did not like that. And so the, there is some, some uh, disagreement as to what happened. He, did, he said, I did not fire her. I was just postponing when she was going to come on, on campus to do her thing. She said she was fired, whatever. So then uh, she goes and files a Title Nine, I believe it's Title X uh, complaint title with 10 the university, yep. which, by the way, is, is not a, yep. an appropriate thing to do because she's not an employee of the university, nor is she a student. Uh, and so, but the, she, that's what she did. She filed a Title Nine, a Title Ten complaint with the university. Mm-hmm. And so they had this investigation. Well, long story short, um, too yeah, I'm too late to say that. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, during... While this investigation was going on, it somehow got leaked to the press that she yep. had made this allegation that this is what they had. They had this phone call. It got leaked to the press. The next day, Chris, the next day, he was suspended the absolute next day. Uh, from, his, uh, yep. from his duties as being a football coach. And so that led to this last week. Basically, he filed a response saying, yes, I did this, but it was consensual. I- I'm estranged from my mm-hmm. wife. Uh, this is uh, this was all consensual, and so you cannot fire me. Well, there is a hearing set in a couple of weeks from now over whether or not the sexual inappropriate uh, behavior took place. Well, the uni- mm-hmm. university decided not to wait until that hearing. They said, no, you're fired right now. We know all that we need to know. And so yesterday, Chris... Uh, Mel Tucker's lawyers sent a letter to the university saying you might want to preserve all of your emails, your documents. We are suing mm-hmm. you in court for wrongful termination. Chris, break right. down all the legal issues that are going on with this story. All right. So, so many, so many legal issues. So timeline wise, right? We have the allegations are coming out in the fall semester of 2022. Fall semester 2022 runs from August until December. The investigation starts December 2022. So breaking this down timeline-wise, we are now in September of 2023. The allegations were made public in early September, late um, um, August in 2023. We don't know who leaked this, right? Correct. It just was leaked to the USA Today. The USA Today story credits a high-level MSU okay, employee. There you go. So someone from Michigan State University be, right, leaked it. Right. But the problem is, is until it was leaked, t- 
Tucker was a high level MSU employee. Um, the athletic director is a high level MSU employee. Anybody from the dean's office or the president's or the provost's office. So it could have been anybody. She could have leaked it and called herself a high level MSU employee because, again, she filed a Title Ten claim under which she would have to be an MSU employee to bring this forth, even though there's discussions on whether or not she's an independent contractor or if she's considered a, an employee under the laws in Michigan. That's up for debate right now, too, because, again, you have to have standing to bring a Title X case, and standing requires that she's either an employee or a student. Maybe she's enrolled in an Excel class. I don't know. You could figure out a couple ways. So, one, we have to determine whether or not the Title X claim is an actual legitimate field or route for her to go. And if it's not, what are the alternative routes for her to be able to bring this cause of action against MSU and against Mel Tucker. Tucker's side is saying she filed this complaint. And it's going to be an anonymous complaint. Right. It's supposed to be an anonymous uh, complaint. It, um, it is an anonymous complaint, but process of elimination, there's only one person who was doing these sex education programs for MSU. Right, right, right. But they're, they're, Mel Tucker's side is saying that this complaint was filed as a shakedown. I know that's their legal... Uh, posture right. here. We, I have no idea if any of this is true. Right. I mean, we know what they have admitted is to point. is true, but beyond that, right. uh, I'm sure that's just their posture. This was done as a shakedown. Mm -hmm. Now, from Mel Tucker's side, I, it's hard for me to buy the fact that he was behind the leak, and here's why. He has $80 million, I did not stutter, $80 million left right. on his football contract. So if he goes 0-10 for the next eight years, they can't fire him for that. So he is due $80 right. million. If this got out there, he stands to lose Zero. that $80 million contract, right. plus more than that, because now I doubt anyone else is going to hire him. So what he stands to lose is just enormous here when, when it comes to the, the amount of mm -hmm. money. And he would be personally liable. So the other part of that is that if he loses the morality clause, she can go after him civilly, and the university doesn't have to pay his lawyers or his fees or anything to right, that effect. Right. Though I, I doubt so, she would do that. Based upon, as I understand her claim here, that this was on the phone call in which she participated in 30 phone calls. She could have hung up at any mm -hmm. moment in time. She stayed on the phone call afterwards. They had a long relationship after this. I think if you play that to a jury... It's going to be hard for a jury to conclude that this was sexual assault. I I know it's possible. I'm just thinking from a jury's perspective, that's a, that's a hard sell. Right. Well, and I think back to the Deshaun Watson massage parlor debacle, right? The the masseuses in the Deshaun Watson thing said that they didn't feel safe to right. leave, and that that was the argument, right? Oh, I could leave at any time. No, Deshaun Watson is a pretty imposing guy. You're in the room. Right. He's are going an NFL on. athlete. Power dynamic. Right. But this is a phone call. Yes. And I'm not saying that that at any time. Like, I. I no, it's, it's possible. It it's, is possible that he did it. It's, it, is, it is possible that he did it. And it is possible that she felt powerless to stop the phone call mid-phone call. But continually to take the phone calls, that's going to be what Tucker's going to use in his defense is that, all right, if I sexually assaulted you or I, I created and triggered your, your post-traumatic stress from when your actual sexual assault happened, um, Tucker's lawyers are going to come in and say, but you kept taking his phone call at midnight. Yes. You kept, you kept having 30 to 45 minute call. And no matter how many texts are deleted, I can go to my T-Mobile bill and see who I called and how long the phone call was. But about was. those deleted text messages, that's also going to be problematic because that would have contained evidence showing mm -hmm. the consensual aspect of Either this way. now. Either I way. don't know the details of his strange relationship with his wife, but uh, right. for him to delete those messages off his phone, okay, maybe we can see why he would have done that. Why would she have deleted those text messages against him? Uh, to me, right. if I'm the if I'm sitting on the jury, I think the jury might conclude that there was things in those text messages that were flirtatious that would not have played well in front of the jury if if uh, she were going to have a claim. So, I I don't think she was bringing a claim necessarily. I do think that uh, so I don't really understand that aspect of it. But he definitely well, stood to lose eighty think... million dollars with this contract. And and this this is like honestly, I don't think she leaked it either. No, I don't I don't think she did. 
I don't that think would not be in her, her interest to leak it. Or to, yeah, it's in nobody's best interest. Maybe the universities, or maybe it's some yes, some person in the um, you know, in the athletic department in the AD's office that leaked it because it's easier to get rid of a yes. crappy coach. And not to say that Mel Tucker's a crappy coach. Maybe he's not performing. Maybe he's doing things that the AD doesn't like. So it's easier to get him out this way than to actually. Like, you can't fire him because he's, he's a bad coach. I mean, yeah. That much is true. When you have right. a, a signed football contract as a coach, if you go right. zero and ten, you can't be fired for going zero and ten. So, so let's. Oh man, AS, ASU is still paying three past coaches <laughs> okay. of the football program because they sucked, so they fired him. But they still have. So, Chris, to pay I him. want your opinion on this because as I understand how this is will play out between the university and Mel Tucker. Is that yeah. they can fire him if he engaged in a, in a moral ineptitude. So if he somehow yes. violated the morals clause. So speak a little bit to that. What typically do we see in these moral clauses, and right. what does it say that in today's day and age it's an issue as to whether or not he did violate that morals clause? Well, I mean the morals clause back in the day, and I and I shouldn't say back in the day like it was so long ago. The Morals Clause, originally instituted in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, was to stop athletes and coaches and other participants in engaging in things that society deemed to be so highly immoral that it affected the family friendliness of It, the it embarrassed the employer. It, well, not only that, it embarrassed the sport. Okay. Right? All the, all the owners and all the, the GMs colluded. This could be a great RICO case. They colluded to put in this Morals Clause, which, again— it's hard. What's what's moral for me could not be moral for someone else. If I engage in, like you know, is back in literally back in the fifties and sixties, if you engaged in sexual conduct, if you were unmarried, that violated the morals. If clause. you watched TV back in that day, I think if you <clears> slept <throat> in the same bed, it violated the morals clause. That's why you had Dick Van Dyke and wife. Mary <laughs> right. sleeping in different beds. Right. 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 Right, and so and so the morals clauses have always been a weird conundrum for for lawyers all over it because it's literally a windsock. What direction is the morality pushing now? Nowadays, it's like, no, oh, let's smoke weed, let's go to the strip club, let's let's do all these things, and that's morally okay. But you can't cheat on your wife, right? So he's now thrown or, in this idea that it's his estranged <laughs> wife. I don't know how that how that changes right. things. Chris, here's my problem with right. with the university's position. So, uh, Mel Tucker has taken the position that this was 100 percent consensual, and that he said, "Yes, I did it, but yeah. it was consensual." Now I know but, she's going to yeah. dispute that, but but this is between Mel Tucker and the university, and so the right. university doesn't know the answer to that. Well, there is a hearing mm -hmm. scheduled for next week where that's going to be the issue. Well, they fired right. him before the hearing. So as from a legal standpoint, have they not waived that as an issue? In other words, whether or not this was consensual or not, as reasons for the firing, that can't right. be the issue because they fired him before the hearing. Yeah, it's it, it shoots MSU in the foot if they wanted to be able to have a clean exit. Yeah, for why Mel not Tucker? have the hearing and then you just simply say, we right. don't believe you, we believe her. Also, there's going to be a due process issue at this point, right? MSU is a government entity, right? It's a state-run school. It receives government funding. It has to abide by a lot of the due process clause and issues. So Mel has – Mel now has several cases lined up to where he's going to get paid any way you look at it because of the inappropriate nature by which MSU acted. And the it, whoever their general counsel is – Sorry guys, like you, you dropped the ball on like you dropped the ball on this one, and maybe they were panicking because everything was in the news and they needed to make a statement and they weighed out what's more important is the idea of cancel culture or the idea of of you know legal ramifications. What's well? What's let's focus on that because better, I do think it's program. the leak that caused. Michigan State's consternation right. because they did not fire him. In fact, they didn't even suspend him while this was going no. on. They were investigating. Nope. They were looking into it, but he was allowed to coach. It was only when the story got leaked that they said, oh, this is a bad thing, and now we've got to suspend our coach. Well, okay, I, I right. kind of get that because now the university's reputation has been harmed, but who did the mm -hmm. leak? 
if it's a Michigan State, because it's supposed to be a confidential proceeding. Mm -hmm. So at some right. point, it's their procedures that did not work, and then this got leaked out. And so that is that going to be on Michigan State University if there's a legal oh, proceeding involving this? 100%. Right. And then I think even one step further, I think um, – the female in this has a case against Michigan State as well, not just against uh, Mel Tucker, because now, because now, like we all know what's going on. Yes, right. She could she can claim loss of future wages. She could claim emotional distress. She can claim all sorts of things because it was a confidential investigation back in December of 2022. We're nine months into it. And all of a sudden, it behooved Michigan State to put this out in the public and put her on blast. How many universities now are going to hire course, her? That's why I have you on this podcast. That is a brilliant insight. Right. I think she does have a lawsuit against yeah. Michigan State. She does. She, she has a great She should be able to rely on State. the confidentiality of these proceedings. And they leaked it. And now she's been mm -hmm. damaged, damaged. Well, and that's the point of confidential proceedings, right? Because what if, if, let's say it was non-consensual. Right. Let's say that the Michigan State found that Tucker overstepped his bounds. Right. They can quietly get rid of him. They can compensate her, whatever that looks like. And nobody loses face and everybody just moves on. And the, the system of this happens and Tucker goes into obscurity. He doesn't get another coach, coaching job. But now everybody's in the middle of the spotlight. So everybody's career is in jeopardy here, not just Tucker's, not just this lady, but the credibility of the MSU athletic department, the credibility of the university and the provost's office. Like this also chills any future complaints of somebody who wants to say, hey, like I was sexually assaulted. Now they're going to have to worry about national limelight. Right. This is chilling. It has a chilling effect on whether or not more sexual misconduct cases are going to be reported because, yeah, he, he made me feel uncomfortable or she made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I felt it was inappropriate. Yeah, there was a lot of chatter about sex and whatnot. But if I report it, I'm going to be on the cover of the USA Today and I'm going to be the poster child for, for sexual assault. At yes, MSU. I think Michigan State has painted themselves in a corner and a legal corner Horrible and they corner. are going to, I think, probably have to settle this case. So that also will be tough because they have the NASTAR settlement. They surely are got to be, the tuition has to be added oh. through the roof there at Michigan State University with all these huge, right. huge settlements. All right. Now let's go on to a more positive story. Republican Ooh. presidential debates. I know your week this week was caught up on, on the pre-debate. Uh, oh, chatter. <laughs> chatter. I was or trying to think of the word where you, oh. you go to a football game and you cook out beforehand. What is that word? Oh, pre-gaming. Pre yeah, there's another word for it. No, it's not for, it was tailgating. tailgating. Yes, you were you were tailgating, tailgating. before the That's presidential right. debates. I know you were. Oh my gosh! And, and so, Heck yeah, yeah, these are these. I, Chris, this is my Christmas. This is my Christmas, <laughs> Chris, Joel. Yeah, Watching these people just beat each other up for no apparent here's reason. Here's my take, and I, I, I'm that par guy in the park with the sign that says "Change my mind." I I think the debates are done. They're outdated. In fact, Chris, I think the debates are the reason why we have such crappy politicians. Are you wondering oh, why is the issue is why do we have such horrible candidates? Why can't we get a better candidate? It's because of the debates. The debates need to go. Now I'm going to lay out my reasons as to why. But first of all, if you watched that debate or if you read any report of that debate, what was the leading headline? The leading story is that it was a cluster mess, <laughs> right? It was mess, just a disaster. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, just interruption over interruption. I think at one point in time, one candidate said, stop talking while I'm interrupting. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I, 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 kept, I caught a couple highlights, and like it was like Nikki Haley and uh, Vivek Ramaswamy like going back and forth at one another, and just like the absolute, just ridiculous, like, Vivek Ramaswamy is my least favorite of, of all of the candidates that are up there. And I don't think I've made a, a, a secret of that. Um, but I, like he was asked why he joined a TikTok. There, it was like this weird thing because Vivek this past couple weeks really railed on the fact that we need to do away with birthright citizenship and that young people between the ages of 18 and 25 have to take a civics test if they want to vote. Now, 
I'm not going to talk about the asinine nature of that because that would take too long. But then he goes and joins TikTok. So that way he can reach the youth and get the youth vote. And it was like they brought that up in the context of China owns TikTok. So what is it? Do you not want the youth to vote without a citizenship test or without a, a civics test? Do you want to fight against China or do you want to reach the youth and mobilize them to vote? What is it? And he's like, all three, George. And I'm like, you, they're opposing concepts. Like you can't, like you can't be pro war and pro peace. Like it, like it. And oh. I, is that, I think that's like, near the time when Nikki Haley, who is my preferred candidate said, she's, Vic, I, every I, time you open your mouth, I get dumber. Now, <laughs> I love See, that. I love but here's that. my problem, and I, and I do love it. But here's the problem with debates. Right. I do love it. That's all and it that is. becomes the headline. Right. So the debates are less about substantive exchange of an mm-hmm. idea and more about what's the headline zap got you roast. Because if I can get you, if I could roast you, and that's a that could become a Twitter you know post or a reel that gets replayed yep. over and over and over again. Um, there's going to be a bump in the polls. So the debates now right. are more about the gotcha moment than any substantive. So if you interrupt someone, if you are a complete jerk on stage, mm-hmm. you get rewarded for that. And so there's an incentive right. to be a jerk on stage. Well, and I think it, and I mean, yeah, I'm going to lay blame here at the, the feet of Donald Trump, but that's the Trump effect, right? That, that was, that was, incredibly successful for Donald Trump in the last presidential uh, debates, right? He, he picked off his, and I'm not saying that it hasn't had an element of being there in many, many presidential debates and many, well, many. Let's go, let's go back debates. in history. Since you uh, hearken right. my history degree, I finally get to dust it off and That's use right. it. 1988. I'm not going to suggest 1988 is the first time. Cause I remember some earlier mudslinging no. that went on as well during a debate. Right. There's always but been mudslinging. Quail. Oh, I uh, was the senator from Indiana, young quail. He, uh, he yep. was a running mate of George H.W. Bush, Daddy Bush. And then he was debating yep. Lloyd Benson on October 5th, 1988. Right. Now, Lloyd Benson was a much more older, distinguished gentleman, a World War II hero. He was a running mate of Democratic nominee Michael Dukakis. And during the Where's debate, the Quayle said, look, I'm young, but I actually have more experience than JFK did, than than Jack Kennedy did when he ran for president. And so this is what Benson said to that. Benson said, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine, a senator. You're no Jack Kennedy. The crowd erupted with applause. And Quayle says that was really uncalled for, Senator. So because Benson had that huge slam that, you know, uh, the gotcha moments, like, see, that's how smart I am. I put you in your place. He was rewarded for that. It's, it's widely viewed that right. Benson won that debate because of his slam, t- his takedown. Right. And I mean, go back to any modern day debate. And I'm going to say modern day because, you know, the last 40 years, I'm going to call modern day at this point. So anything from 1980, from the Reagan debates all the way through now, it's it has been, it has been not. Here's my, I mean, it's degraded, right? Some years it's been this is my policy. Let's talk about energy independence, or let's talk about the war in Iraq, or let's talk about um, domestic issues, healthcare, gun control, all that stuff. But it's devolved to the point where that's like, let's talk about energy independence. Well, Mike Pence can't spell energy, <laughs> and it's like. Okay, and yeah, it was entertaining for a, a while, the same way that Jerry Springer was entertaining right. for a while. That's a great but analogy. All, this is Jerry Springer. But we all grew, we all grew bored of Jerry Springer, <laughs> right? We we all got like, man, like we we're tired of watching people be exploited for just being different or having different. Like, look, they're qualified individuals. They if they they would not be on that stage if they did not have some sort of grasp of the importance of the office of the president. But the way that they're acting right now is an embarrassment. And so here's what I'm going to suggest. This is my prediction. I don't even know if Donald Trump is this Mm -hmm. smart, but I I have a hard belief. But it works out for When the words came out of my mouth, I realized I know the answers to that. But that being said, Donald Trump is doing great in the polls right now. And and I am going to suggest one of the reasons why – is he is skipping the debates. 
Donald Trump's yep. decision to skip the debates is the, his most brilliant, tactful, legal, political move he has ever made. Do you remember, because I know it's been a long time ago, how bad Trump was during the debates? Let me just jog your memory yep. just a bit. This is from his debate on September 30th, 2020. And so there was this whole issue of, um, this, I, I'm reading some report now as, as based upon that debate. And so just tell me if you remember mm -hmm. this as a thought. So this again, during the presidential debates, this was what the reporter said. Mm -hmm. um, will you shut up, man? Actually, that's what um, Biden said about Trump. So the Democratic nominee, right. Joe Biden, said that during his first debate with President Trump on September 30th, 2020, he said, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. The debate in a word was chaos. Trump came out guns blazing while moderator Chris Wallace struggled mightily to show any symbols of control over the proceedings. Facing questions about the economy, the coronavirus pandemic, the Supreme Court and racial protests, Trump was combative and Biden failed to articulate pretty much anything due to constant interruptions. <laughs> Do you remember that where Trump was just yes. interrupting, interrupting? He yes. wouldn't even let Biden bury himself. Trump just had to just butt in. So, I mean, I can harken back to the 2016 debates where that's I mean, when Trump first got on the stage with all of the what I like to think were the adults in the room. Right. You had Jeb Bush, you had uh, uh, Cruz, you had Marco Rubio, you had, I think Chris Christie was in that. John Kasich was there at the time as well, right? All these heavy hitters of the Republican Party, all of which um, could have been president of the United States. And Donald Trump, you know, pretty boy Jeb, and, you know, Marco Rubio's dad's a serial killer, and, like, he has an ugly wife, or Ted Cruz has an ugly wife, like, all of these things, and you're like, this this isn't this isn't border security. This isn't war with Iraq. This isn't military readiness. This is oh we little hands. Yes, we little hands. Yeah, I think when it came to the presidential debates, Trump did himself no favors. I think he hurt himself because of how combative he was. He excels in the stand up routine. That is his normal rallies. I mean, he's pretty funny. He, he's very uh, egotistical, but whatever. He's by himself. It's, it's a routine. He does it well. But when he gets in a debate, like, let's just say with Biden, he looks mean. He looks, he just interrupts. And so then the whole response is, why won't you just be civil? Why do you have to be so Trump, Mr. Trump, right? That's kind of the, 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 the thought that people have. Well, if he skips the debate, that goes away. And so now he is just playing into his strength. So I think by him skipping the Republican debates, which he can do because he is so uh, uh, up in the polls. Ahead in the polls. Now Biden will be able to say, you know what? I'm not going to debate you. You already set the standard, the, the stage of skipping the debates. Yeah. I'm not going to debate you. You're under indictment. And Trump is going to say, yeah. yes, I didn't have to cancel the debates. You cancel the debates. And he gets off scot-free from looking like a clown. I don't know. And... The Republican debates, as as circus three ring circus as it is, how big of a circus would it be to watch those nine people gang up on Donald Trump and just talk about the indictments all day long? It would be a three hour. Well, at least I'm not under investigation by Congress. At least I don't have twenty counts of fraud. At least I didn't lose my business in New York. At least I didn't do like that's all they would right, do, right. right? That's that's all they they. All, it would be a uniting factor for these nine candidates because all they would do is talk about, well, at least I'm not under federal indictment. <laughs> and from a lawyer's perspective, it, you know, you're right. You would not want your client on the right. stage trying to be egotistical right. oh. when you have four or five, whatever, however different many indictments going well, on. And, right. And Trump gets caught by the mouth every single time, right? These debates are not privileged conversations. Yes. They are not they, – they are not – under lock and key. So him running his mouth and lying, which we know Trump does, that's not like out of the, the norm for him. He would lie and deny and he would call names and he would say the DA is inadequate and, da -da -da and make insinuations like he does on True Social all the time. Like, that's not a good look for somebody who's under 91 a felony all account. Right. Like federal so you thing. heard it here first that the, yeah. if you wonder why we have the politicians that we have, why we have the elected officials we have, oh, yeah. look no further than the presidential debates. They, they are set up yeah. to get the clown, get the Jerry Springer reality TV series mm -hmm. hero elected as our next president. Well, 
And it emboldens every office down all the way to dog catcher, right? It emboldens people to be like, if this is what the leader of the free world looks like, I can do this. I can go into a city council meeting and I could talk about all of these things and call people all these names. My president does it. And you're just like, ma'am, we're, we're talking about, you know, like school funding for, you know, school lunches here. We're not, we're not talking about whatever, you know, abortion topic you want to talk about there. It's a, it's a colloquial kindergarten. There's 31 right, right, kids. Right. Could we know? All right. Moving on to our next illegal news item, which I, I find this yeah. really interesting because this one's going to expose some of our, I want to use the word hypocrisy, though that might sound too mm-hmm. negative, but sometimes we'll take one position publicly, but when your legal affairs are now being threatened, might, we might take a different mm-hmm. position. Well, here's what I'm talking about. Hunter Biden's gun charge. We, we all heard about this. Yeah. It's been in the news. He was indicted, yep. uh, charged with a felony of um, applying for a gun license when he mm-hmm. was dealing with drugs. And so it's one of the requirements yeah. when you are filling out for an application for a, um, uh, a gun uh, a firearm, firearm. Yep. that you not be under the influence of drugs. Well, there is yep. an issue now percolating at the Supreme Court level over whether or not that violates the Second Amendment. Under the Second Amendment, you have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms. It's a personal right, according to the Supreme Court. The issue is how far does that right go? Well, one of the arguments is even felons have a constitutional Mm -hmm. right to possess guns. And that case is before the U.S. Supreme Court right now. That's a huge door. And so the Biden administration has been somewhat pro gun regulation or this it's kind of taking mm-hmm. the political posture yeah. you know the yeah. conservatives saying hey look we want yep. less gun regulations the the other side is saying no you we should have more gun regulations that's kind of the political posture of the two parties yeah it's weird well now yeah. joseph biden's son is going to be in court and this issue could very well reach the u.s supreme court arguing the exact opposite chris what do you make of this mm-hmm. man it's a it's a lot Right. Gun gun control in this country, in my opinion, and it may differ a little bit from yours, Joel, which is not, I don't know, out of the ordinary for this podcast. Um, but I look at the Second Amendment and I look at the idea of a well-regulated militia being essential, that the people's right to keep and bear arms has a very different connotation than the people have the right to keep and bear arms on their own. I think the limiting factor in that comes into play. I do agree with the Scalia decision in Heller that allowed for personal gun ownership because I think that's an important right of individuals. But I do think that there is a leash on what type of guns people should have. But that's not the debate here. The debate here is whether or not Hunter Biden, who was under the influence of drugs, or any individual who is a felon, should they have their gun rights restored? And I am going to take the hard line and say no. If you are convicted of a violent felony, your gun right is gone without extenuating circumstances or a pathway back to getting your gun rights. If you've proven or if it has been proven that you are a violent felon, it, it's hard for me to say your gun rights should be restored. Yes, I, I, I agree with a lot with what you're saying. In fact, I, I somewhat disagree right. with the, the conservative position on any mm-hmm. restriction hindrance right. to you getting a gun is an unconstitutional violation of the second amendment, right? It's like, no, no, not everything is a, is an incremental approach to taking away your right to guns. If they want to know your name, yeah, you got to put your name down. That's not that big right. of a hindrance. You can put your name down on a form and that's not going to violate your second amendment to, to, to keep their mm-hmm. arms. I would even suggest a week's delay. Is that really that big of a deal? Is that really Wait keeping you yeah. from possessing arms? No, file your application and, and get your gun and wait seven days before you fire. I, I, to me, I don't see how it's actually taking away now could you get to the point where it is like a year okay yeah because that, that's yeah. common yeah, yeah. sense you know a, a week right. waiting time that's not that big of a deal but i get the arguments is oh once you open up the door you've kind of allowed them to come in and and take away all your right. rights i'm just i'm not sure i i buy that i do think there is a personal right to keep and bear arms yeah. it just there, there's some can be some reasonable limitations one of them very well might be if you are strung up on drugs, you should not be getting right. a firearm at that moment in time. Maybe that's not a bad restriction to have in the law. But my point here is, mm-hmm. 
sometimes we might be taking a a, uh, a, a posture publicly a, saying, look, yeah. I think the Second Amendment, for whatever reason, shouldn't shouldn't be a, you shouldn't have these you should have these kind of restrictions, right? Like if a felon should not have hey. firearms, people on drugs should not have firearms. Mm -hmm. But when it comes right. to your own personal self or your your child who is in court now Absolutely facing goes jail time, window. and this is an argument, are you not going to make that argument? Right. Well, so I am the biggest hypocrite on this, and I will own it all day long. I, I am, again, very anti-gun. I do not think as a society we should have guns. I own guns. <laughs> okay. I own guns. I have, I have firearms. Part of my reason on why I have firearms is that other people have them as well. And, and at the eventual collapse, unfortunate collapse of society, I know that I have certain items that are high value for at that end of, end of days. I know that it will be like, I shouldn't say I know, but it will be likely that I would have be put in a position where I have to defend my personal property if it ever got to a point where society had there collapsed. I know my neighbors. I know what guns they have as well because it's Arizona, <laughs> and for some reason they like to put it on display. Hopefully they don't know that I have weapons as well, but I am a huge hypocrite when I say we shouldn't have guns and then I'm owning Chris, guns you, for our family protection. you just protection. became the best spokesman for, for the Second Amendment. I, I got to tell you, I don't, it's probably inadvertent, but you just laid out the right. perfect case for why the Second Amendment exists. So maybe you should be thinking about your right. Supreme Court practice now coming up. I also, no, I also don't have automatic machine guns or automatic shotguns or anything to that effect. I also believe in a 10-day or more waiting period. I also am very trained on the weapons by which I own. I've gone to safety classes. I've taken shooting lessons. I've gone through safety courses, all of which I feel should be mandated for anyone who wants to have a gun because it puts the fear of God wow. in you, not only from the, the, the side of actual physical holding of the weapon, but running through the legal ramifications of just brandishing my firearm in public. Well, Chris, I don't want you to think I'm some kind of wuss. Uh, I, I know you have a pit bull. I have a golden doodle. You have <laughs> guns. I have Nerf guns and water pistols. I, I'm not sure, though, if you ever yeah. apply the, the waiting period to my water pistols that it's going to make much sense. But, um, yeah, uh, isn't right. that interesting? We both uh, maybe have a but, political position that's kind of contrary to right. the way we actually live our lives. Well, and I think that in this case, in the Hunter Biden case, um, Daddy Joe versus President Biden are two very different people at this moment. Daddy Joe wants to do what's best for his son. How can I help my kid? And that is admirable of any father wants to help their son no matter what. President Biden is a different political beast than Daddy Good Biden. Point. And, and President Biden wants to have this gun reform go through. Daddy Biden wants to help an obviously troubled kid who's made obviously bad mistakes in his life. And his, maybe he's trying to put his life back together. Maybe not. I don't know. But as a father, the treatment of your kids and their well-being is paramount versus when you're the president and you have to look at what global policy looks all right like. well said i'll let you have the last word because it is now time to talk sports it is time for courtroom quarterback this is my week joel That's right this is where is my crown i need to find a crown somewhere and put it on unfortunately this we don't have I'm time to go over our picks from last week it's been a great <laughs> podcast it will no actually Let's let's uh, replay the tape from last week where I believe let's I said, and I quote, here is a lock. Take Colorado plus the points over Oregon. You can't miss. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, do yep. you believe um, yeah. I'm full of crap now? You know, Joel, I, w I wouldn't say full of crap. We all have bad days. <laughs> we all, but, but the fervor, the fervor in which you felt. I did. With your whole oh, chest man. and everything that was in you to the point where you convinced me oh. to pick Colorado. Because I wasn't going to do that early on. But I believe What you. What does it say about the whole world of sports where I follow sports? I'm, I'm telling you, my weekend, 
in fact, almost my entire mm-hmm. week now. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Mm-hmm. I'm watching football. I, I, I know yeah. more about football than I know about pretty much anything else in, in life because I'm, I'm that much invested yeah. in football. I totally missed this. Right. One. I have no idea what happened. Why did Colorado get lambasted by Oregon? Everyone missed this one. Well, and again, 23 points. 23 points. Yes. Like, everyone, against a t- I mean, that was is a 21 point spread against a team that is right. doing well. They're the talk of the nation. Really Everyone thought well. how great Oregon right. was doing. They're going to have the number one pick in the draft there in Sanders. I mean, it's an amazing yeah. uh, story, but yet the 21 point spread wasn't enough. It should have been an 81 point spread. They got shellacked yeah. there. Oh my God. And hammered. so Colorado is playing USC this week. Um, and so it's also another 20-point spread. I am going to stay away from that pick this week. I'm not going to yeah. touch it with a 10-foot pole. Nope. I am just picking NFL this week. I'm not even picking But before we move on, I do have a couple of, of uh, things I want to discuss with you about college football. Uh, here's a, fo- a feel-good story. Yeah. And this might be one of the reasons why Colorado did not cover the spread. They were missing Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter was Colorado's mm-hmm. – star athlete he's playing both yes, sides of the ball he's playing stud. on the defensive side yep. he's playing on the offensive side i believe defensive back and wide receiver much like uh, yep. Deion sanders did for the dallas cowboys um yeah he, he's been the talk he's, he's he's an amazing athlete the problem mm-hmm. is the week before they were playing colorado state and henry right. blackburn hit uh, Colorado's Travis's Hunter. Some say it was dirty. It was not needed. It definitely was a penalty uh, a flag that was thrown, but it was in the heat of battle. Yep. It was a decision made in the heat of battle. That I hate to say a decision made in the heat of, in the heat of battle is dirty, but we all know what we're talking about. He didn't have to do it. It was right. a late hit. It was a violation of the rules. And right. Travis Hunter was injured and could not play then against Oregon. So his maybe his his omission there, uh, his absence was why there was that twenty one point spread. All right. But there Maybe. were some death threats that were made against Henry Blackburn. Now, you should know that Henry Blackburn is from Boulder, Colorado, which is where the University right. of Colorado is. Well, they were going against right. their own, saying, this is horrible. You took out one of our star athletes. There were death threats, which is just crazy in and yeah. of itself. Insane. So how did Insane. Colorado's Travis Hunter respond to this situation, this alleged Dirty hit, which I should need to take out the word alleged, but whatever. You get the idea. Right. How did Travis yeah, Hunter no. respond? Like a gentleman. He, it's amazing. He actually invited like, Henry Blackburn like out bowling. They went bowling right. there in Boulder, Colorado, right. just to send the public message of it was just a game. All has been forgiven. Let's move on. Chris, I think this is a great well, story. I. It's absolutely wonderful, right? Because it, it, it is, the game is physical. And oftentimes we cannot, as human beings, separate that physicality from the purpose of the game. Like you, you look at guys that do like MMA or boxing or wrestling or something to that effect, and they're this is what their job is. Their job is to beat each other up. Football's the same way. I was just watching the um, they had an interview with George Kittle um, earlier in the week, and they asked George. It was I think it was on Pat McPhee or something like that. You know, does it hurt being a tight end? And he's like, every day I get hit by multiple cars. Like wow. every week I am in multiple car wrecks. And that's the physicality of the game. So there is going to be collisions. There is going to be physical violence in this game. But just because you rock somebody or you get a, a hit that was maybe dirty or a late hit, we can call it a late hit, um, doesn't mean that you're out here like Bloods and Crips fighting over turf or you're out here trying to somehow like own the prison yeah. yard. It is not no, that you messed level, up. but we think it is. We think right. it is, right? People think it is. They get so invested in sports and we're invested in sports. You and I are very invested in sports, but I am not going to go. Like, I don't think Russell Wilson is going to drive over to Tua Tagovailoa's house and smoke right. him because they won 70 zero. Like it, any given Sunday, any given Saturday, it's a game and let's move on. And that's what they were showing people that the emotion we tie into this game isn't there. The, the violence isn't violence for violence sake. It's a Good game. Point. All right. Well, let's go over some of our picks from last week. Um, 
Oh, let's we do this. We have a, your record was, let's see here, you got a W on that one, a W, a W, a W, a W, and one loss. I am so sorry I am responsible for that one loss. You went 5-1 and one last week, and so your record overall is 6-4-1. and one. Pretty impressive. Well, I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, I mean, come on. I the the one that stuck with me, and I was watching Monday Night Football and talking with my wife, is the quote from last week, and we need to run tape where you said, "Oh, I'm just going to take the opposite of your picks," <laughs> and I was like, "Wow," I because I was I'm no lie I was horrible in week two, right? I right now I'm six and four, so that means in week two, I was one and four, <laughs> or I was one in one and three, or something like that, two and three. And so, obviously, I was horrible. So, it was a fair comment and, and no shade being thrown. But this week, I'm the king of New That's York. That's right, baby. man. Like, I, I'm i a little too cocky I, I this week. Feel, and I'm going to get slapped I back do down. I feel bad that your, your one loss there was um, because I said it was a lock. I, I could have had an undefeated week. Well, and, and to boot, we were in Vegas last week for my sister's wedding. Did you put any money so down? What, all the money, Joel. I bet all my picks but Colorado. Sweet. So... So that, like, I had a free weekend in wow. Vegas. Thank you, that MGM Sportsbook. That is the time to put your money where your mouth is. That, All right. right. Well, I figured I was going to lose. I put 100 bucks across the five games, and I walked away with a free Vegas weekend for me, my wife, and my there, brother. There you go. All right. I did not have your good of a week. I finished four and three. Um, I had probably had too many picks. So my record is eight, three, and two. So I am up five mm -hmm. for the year. You're up two. Uh, and so, hey, it, it could change mm -hmm. every week. And so do you have your picks ready right. for this week? I do. I do. All right. Um, so it's going to be a fun – I think it's going to be a fun week of football because there's a couple of really huge, great games I'm looking forward to and then a couple of sleeper games that I can't just wait to enjoy and fall asleep to. But right off the bat, I'm picking Dolphins plus 2.5 over the Bills. I'm not sure that, that, that Tua and Tyreek and Waddle are going to be able to roll over the Bills the way they did the Broncos, but 2.5 point – like all the Dolphins have to do is I win. And I, and I think that – you know, I like Josh Allen and the boys, but the Dolphins are they are connecting in, in yes. ways and like Mike McCarthy's doing a great job there behind the, the headset. So if you're gonna give me like if it was even money, Dolphins Dolphins and um and Bills, I would have been a little more hesitant. But if you're gonna give me two point five points, even if the it's a close game, which I, I think it's probably gonna be, it's gonna be a one point flip. It's not going to be a, a blowout I, like it was against Denver. I agree. Denver. That is a good-looking pick right there because I think the Dolphins, right mm -hmm. now, they are scary, scary good. They Scary good. I mean, they're down that NFC or that AFC conversation, right? We talk about the Bills. We talk about the Bengals. We talk about your Chiefs. We got to be talking oh, about the Dolphins. As a Chiefs fan, that, that's the team I, I fear, yeah. the, the Dolphins. Now, I right? will say this. you got The season is not won in week four and it seems like the dolphins no. are playing this season as if they should peak in week four the chiefs andy reed has been there before in Denver. Yeah. he knows you yeah. don't coach a team so that they peak in week four you coach them so, so that they peak come playoff time and so yeah the dolphins right. look amazing right now but maybe it's too early for them to look that amazing i'm just saying they but might be peaking I, in week four but i also think and we had this same conversation about the Eagles last year is that they were peaking a little early. They can't stay undefeated all the time, the whole nine yards. And, and they, they went, great. you know, they, they had one, they had one loss and they made it to the Super Bowl and got a second loss. And that was their season. And so, you know, we didn't get to see a lot from Tua last year because of concussions and injuries and stuff. But man, this system, I think these guys are young enough and they're hungry enough that they can maintain this level of intensity through the season and in the Broncos game, right? They pulled Tua out at the third quarter. Like Tua could have stayed in and scored me another 16 or 17 fantasy points. But Mike McCarthy is seeing like, okay, we can rest yes. people. And even if, even if the Broncos catch up, it isn't about the record setting of it. It is that we need now, to win. I'm going to throw this need, out there. Need to win. And this is, it was another talking point I had later on, but I have seen a difference in how these games are being officiated this year. They are letting people hit each other. 
They, they are letting yes, the quarterback being hit even late. I right. remember a couple of years ago, last year, Chris Jones would hit a quarterback. They would throw the flag on Chris mm -hmm. Jones just because you hit him just a little bit late, and right. that's roughing the passer. And and right, it's almost it's almost a paranoia where you you had to basically just two hand touch the the quarterback, and that's it. Well, this year I am seeing quarterbacks getting way late and no flag whatsoever. I've yet right. to even see a real roughing the, the quarterback call. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. that when it looks at the Dolphins, will there be injuries? Will injuries decide how they how far they go this year? I hope not. I hope injuries stay out of this equation. Yeah. I really like Tua. Uh, I hope he's an amazing. Yeah, I like I like the whole Dolphin system uh, right of now. My Chiefs. I really hope that he wins the MVP. Right. I mean, it's a great team. It's a great story, mm -hmm. but. I also think that they are peaking a wee bit too early. All right, wh who's your next pick? Sorry. So I got Eagles over the Commanders. Eagles are getting negative eight over the Commanders. I think they're going to handle that pretty easily. I got Bengals over the Titans. They got to win by a field goal. I think, you know, Joe Burrow hasn't been performing well. He was one of the busts of the week for quarterback. I think he only had like eight fantasy points last week. But they, they pulled out their victory, and I think they're going to just – do the, the upward incline for the rest of the, the season. This, uh, I'm going to save my worst pick for the last because I'm picking from the heart. Uh, I'm taking Chiefs nine and a half over the Jets. Unless Taylor Swift's there again. Unless we have T-Swizzle. Maybe she's the new secret weapon for the Chiefs. Big up to the Swifties. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing story that's <laughs> been this week. I mean, it's like every day there's a new rumor going on between Taylor Swift right. and uh, Travis Kelsey. And I don't even know what's the been, right. what's been my favorite rumor. Uh, but uh, it's been a – what I, I, I do find this kind of funny. Cause I, I recognize yeah. this meme that's been going around is how worked up <clears throat> some guys get – when we hear from oh, the yeah. Swifties saying, I'm glad that finally, you know, Taylor Swift can bring some attention to this unknown guy named Travis Kelsey. It's kind of nice he gets to now his day in the sun. It's like, what? Right. Travis Kelsey is the best tight end possibly ever was Arguably, on Saturday yeah. Night Live last, um, you know, last year. Yep. He's, he's already right. had his day in the sun, but whatever. At least now he gets some. Well, I mean, I, I think – there's a there's a whole demographic of people that the NFL doesn't reach. And that demographic of people, bless their hearts, have money and they're buying things. Kelsey's jersey went up 400% in sales. Chiefs gear is so, like I went to Amazon this morning to see if I could buy a Travis Kelsey jersey and they are sold out. Amazon wow. is sold out of they have Mahomes. They have Mahomes, but they don't have Kelsey. Right. The power of the pocket of these Swifties like you remember earlier in the year when the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster debacle came out and people are paying three thousand dollars a ticket to go see to go see her and she's selling out NFL stadiums left, right, and center. They have money, and that's a great play for the NFL. My fear is that if it's true and Kelsey and, and Taylor Swift are together and they're dating that if they ever should break up, she's going to write a multi-platinum <laughs> album about how big of a jerk Travis Kelsey is. And I don't know if Kansas City can recover financially from that. <laughs> hey, hey. I don't know. I, I, don't I am know not if... buying this. Travis Kelsey is a jerk. I know that's, a, <laughs> that's one oh, of the talking not. points out there. Oh, he was a womanizer. Right. Well. <laughs> Fair. I was a womanizer, and then I met the right one. There you go. Like, I'm a reformed woman. I, look, I, I know what it's like to be a garbage <laughs> man. I know exactly what narcissistic behavior manipulating women is and i was wrong and i was a jerk and i i met my wife and um i had to change who i was to be a better man for her and travis could he went from like full beard to like stream like state <laughs> let's trooper. just say that if there were such a person who could who could straighten out a womanizer maybe it could be the person who writes songs for the millions and like and uh -huh. has been known to write songs about her past you know people who have wronged her i'm thinking that's the one person that can straighten out a travis kelsey womanizer because he knows he has to toe the line uh, with this one uh but hey i don't know well and you get older right like kelsey's now 33 years old you grow up right and the way that he treats his mom right for those of you at home who have not watched the Kelsey documentary on Amazon Prime, do yourself a favor and go watch that documentary. It's amazing about the insight on the Kelsey family and how wonderful they are. You see Travis and Travis owns all this time at Cincinnati, all this time at in Heights 
about him being a punk party kid and how Andy Reid has helped him turn his life around and his big brother Jason's turned his life around. Like, this is a good time. This is a good time for Travis. It's a good time for – All right. Do you have any more picks or is that it? I do. Sorry. No, I do. I have the uh, the snoozer bowl of Broncos over the Bears. They're giving Broncos 3.5 points. I think Broncos are going to come out and try to prove something, and it's not going to be hard to do that against okay. the Bears. Okay. Yeah, that, that is going to um, be a fascinating game. I, I really want to watch that because if you ha- didn't follow football last week, let me just quickly lay it out there for you. The Broncos got <laughs> beat by Miami Dolphins 70-20, beat. to 20, I believe. That was like the most points scored yeah. in an NFL game in a long, long time. Meanwhile, the Bears yes. got shellacked by the Chiefs, I think 40-something to um, to 10. 11. But that 10, 11 was just garbage 10, points. Yeah. It really was three. They scored late. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These two teams are just hopeless and helpless, and now they're facing off in what has to be much must-see TV. Obviously. And then lastly, this pick comes from the heart, not from the head. And I'm taking 49ers – Plus 14 over the Cardinals. Uh, I am not giving you that one. I will give you 49ers minus 14. But if you saw 49ers plus 14, no, let, let's write mortgage the house right 14. now. You're correct. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, Niners. Minus 14. Um, minus 14. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking Cardinals plus 14. And I was like, no, 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 no. The Niners are going to win by more than 14 points. I, you know the- what? I, I see Bro- that. Bro- I, I see the Cardinals. They're they're probably still partying right now uh, over last week's yeah. win over America's team, the Cowboys. So not not a bad pick. All right, I'm gonna get some college games out there. I'm gonna go uh, Kentucky Ooh, you, you. minus one over Florida. I, I this is the SEC. Ooh. I know, but Kentucky. This is pretty much a straight up game. I think Kentucky is is a really solid team this year. They I like their coach, uh, and so I will take Kentucky minus one over Florida. Not a lock. Here, my next pick is going to be, like you said, this I'm leading with my heart, but let's talk about this here. Nebraska, Michigan. This is a statement game. I don't know what statement is going to be made. I I like Coach Rule. I think he's got Nebraska going in the right direction. I think Michigan is overrated this year. I think they played absolutely nobody. That's why they have you know, the the best defense in, in college football because they played high school teams so far. So I'm not sure that their defense is that great. Nebraska does not have an offense. That's the problem. We have a very much a one-dimensional offense, which is hand the ball to the quarterback and let him run. That's it. That's, that's our entire offense. We cannot pass the ball. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so I, this is risky, but Nebraska plus 17 in my heart of hearts. I am just hoping – Nebraska can this is this is turning the corner here we will make this competitive we will still lose we'll lose by less than 17 no I no I fully agree with that that is a fair assessment 17 points yeah now I'm gonna have to tune into that game but I'm not picking it I'm tuning in a a Nebraska fan all right, I, this next one, I, I don't uh, – these next two picks, I'm iffy on, but I, I, I like them. I'm energized by them. Texas versus Kansas. I remember two years ago, I was watching this guy. I, I was listening to the game. I was, I was traveling, going to a hotel when they went to overtime, and KU shocked Texas. Now, KU has an amazing offense. I think – Points are going to be just pouring out in this game. The over-under is 61 points. I am taking the over on the Kansas-Texas game. Which brings me to my next pick. Dolphins versus Bills. You already picked the Dolphins, which I think is a really (laughs) smart pick. I don't know. I just see these two offenses really lighting up the scoreboard. The over-under is 53 and a half. That basically is a 20, well, it's a, what, a 34 to 20 game. Uh, it's a, you know, 28, 27 game. I think they're going to do the over mm-hmm. on that. I think the Dolphins are going to light it up, and I think the Bills are going to light it up. I think they're going to go over the 53 and a half. Any thoughts on that? I like, no, I like, I think it, it is going to be a high scoring game. We've already learned that both teams know how to be surgical in the air and on the ground, um, especially if Barkley's going to come back into the game. Um, I, yeah, I'm down. 
I'm, I'm here. I'm with taking this. the Broncos minus three and a half over the Bears. Uh, it's like you did in the toilet bowl. I think it's going to be a fascinating game to watch. I just have to think the Bears are going absolutely nowhere. They have a quarterback who is a colossal mess. That is a bad situation. The Bears fire their defensive coordinator. They, they, they're rudderless and they have no players. It's a mess of a situation. The Broncos, meanwhile, I think actually have a real coach. He, he has won a Super Bowl. He is gutsy. Yeah. I, I just have to think he's going to write that ship. And, and so he, I'm going to take the, um, yeah. um, the the Broncos over the Bears. The Browns, minus three Got over it. the Ravens. I, I'm becoming a believer in the Browns. What, what do you think? Oh, yeah. I No, I'm there. It was I avoided that game because it was tough. Baltimore dropped a heartbreaker. Um, I think that, that Lamar's – performing but yeah that's a tough one because the the browns are performing as well deshaun's making his deshaun making his watson money. is looking better every single week they now have hunt in the the backfield uh, i think the browns are yeah. going to um they're, they're turning the corner here and meanwhile the ravens i think are turning the corner the wrong way they signed too many old receivers they're they're getting injured uh it, it, it's not gonna look good for the ravens that, that's my prediction I got the Bengals over Tennessee. Yeah. I have no idea why that's a two and a half point game. I think the Bengals are are, are a Super Bowl t- type team. Yeah. I think they're going to win that one um, and blow away the two and a half point spread. Um, Colts over the Rams. That's an even game. I'm becoming a believer in the that Colts. I, I think they're going to take that okay. game over the Rams. I, I, I have no idea why. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Steelers minus three over the Texans. Again, the Steelers, I have, they've righted the ship this year. They look solid. They look good. The Texans are a mess. Um, they, they are coming back. They, they are coming uh, out of their, their, their doldrums, I believe. But I still will take the Steelers minus three. And then lastly, like you, I've lost my head. I'm taking the Chiefs uh, over the Jets just because the Jets. You got it. Zach Wilson has no idea what he's doing. I, I, I love him. Against Mahomes and Kelsey? Come yeah, on. I, I cannot like that situation. All right. So there you go. Those yeah. are our picks this week. Any other football matter before we sign off? What, we got to pick our Super Bowl predictions, man. We're getting into week four here, and we haven't done our Super Bowl prediction All right. yet. Let's do that next week. Let's, let's tee that up. Here's what we got to do right. by ne- for next week, Chris. We have got to lay out the teams that are already, mat- if not mathematically, at least in the mind eliminated from the Super Bowl. We, we know those teams. Bears and Broncos. And we, know, Bears and Broncos. and we, I think, know those teams that we are going to pick the Super Bowl from. I mean, we're already, we've seen, okay, these teams. Now, we're not going to be uh, very stingy here, but still, we know the teams that would say, right. yes, they have what it takes. Like, for example, right now, I would say, Cleveland can win the Super Bowl. They have the quarterback. They have the coach. They have the yeah. defense. I don't think it's possible. I'm not putting any money on it, but they could win the Super Bowl. Right. The 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 Bears? No, they're done. Probably not. Put a, put a fork in. Right. There is absolutely zero way. Do not even put a dime on the, the Vegas line picking the Bears. <laughs> to, I don't care if you get a gazillion to one odds and you're, you're just betting a penny. Right. Do not waste that penny. They will not make the no. Super Bowl. So... Next week, we can do that evaluation. We can say what teams are done, what teams yeah. are within the realm of the conversation, and then who will be our right, Super Bowl right, right. picks. So. I love it. Let's do it. All right. Next have week. a great week, and we'll see you next week. All right. We'll see you, Joel. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star review. We need your love to help us continue highlighting the funnier side of the law. I want to give a special shout-out to our Vice President of Operations, Wendy Oster, without whom this entire operation would be a complete and utter mess. Sean Wynn and 15 Five Features for making me sound way better than I actually do. Brooke Bolin for our marketing efforts. And Ryan Kuhn and Paul Kuhn of Tri- Plus City Marketing for our technical and computer support.